the counter. Yay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this um, is usually the time they go outside, so they're going kind of crazy. <laughs> somebody's going to say, he's got a cat on the counter. <laughs> hey, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> cat, we have a cat today, which is nice on the <laughs> counter. This is Chef AJ and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host and this is where we're introducing you to amazing people like you doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today is Matt Bennett from Raw Intuition. He's going to be making creamy in a pickle five-star salad. It's part of a wonderful opportunity that only happens once a year for 11 days and we only have about a day and a half left. It's called the Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle and he's going to tell you all about his contribution and the bundle in general. There's a link right below this video if you want to check it out. Please welcome Matt to the show. How are you? Hey, hey, Chef AJ. Thanks again for having me on. Yeah, I'm excited. The bundle's been going really well. And, you know, a lot of a lot of great lives uh, out there and um, a lot of great new information and new products being shared. So I'm uh, grateful to have a chance to speak to your audience again. So, yeah, um, my contribution for, for the Ultimate Raw Vegan Bundle, which as Chef AJ said, is uh, only through tomorrow. So May 11th is the last day you can get this bundle and then it's gone forever. And the Appetizers Collaboration Book is something that's unique to the bundle. So that's one thing that you won't ever be able to get outside of the bundle. Otherwise, everybody else's products are going to go back to full price. Whereas right now, you know, like my book right now is or everybody's products are about like a little over a dollar. I think there's 40 products for 50 bucks. So really cool deal as always. And my, my contribution is my new ebook, Five Star Salad Revolution. And so, um, you know, I have talked in the past about five star salads, but in this book, I took it much further. I go much, you know, more in depth. And I talk a lot about, you know, various things with, you know, in, in regards to how important leafy greens are to the, the human diet and why people should be eating more leafy greens. Even the people that, you know, tell me that they do eat a lot of leafy greens when I see what they're eating, you know, it's really not that much. So um, I wanted to make a book to help kind of change the perception around leafy greens and just highlight the benefits, you know, kind of debunk some of the, the myths out there about leafy greens, uh, you know, some of the concerns about anti-nutrients and things, and then show people how easy it is to start incorporating more leafy greens into your diet and raise what I call your green esteem. All right. So we all know what self-esteem is, but green esteem is how you feel about greens and salads and your perception of them, like how much you value the benefits from greens. So I think a lot of people out there have a pretty low green esteem. So we're going to try and raise that up today. And, and through my book, that's what I try to do. So yeah, so we're going to make in a pickle, let me see, I called it in a pickle five-star salad. And again, so the, the five-star salad concept is something that I came up with to help people understand the structure that, that a, a salad needs in order to really satisfy you and feel like a meal once you've eaten it. You know, a lot of people have a salad and then they feel kind of, you know, they got cravings and other issues. They want to have something afterwards. But when you have a five-star salad, it should satisfy you and you should be good for the rest of the night. So yeah, that's, that's what we're going to make right now. We're going to make this in a pickle, five star salad, and it's it's part of uh, my book, of course. And I've got seventeen brand new, delicious, creamy, homemade, oil free salad dressings in the book. Really, I think they're some of my best dressings that I've made so far. And so, yeah, I'm really excited for you guys to to give it a try and and, and hear the feedback. So far, it's been pretty good. So I'm hopeful you'll like it. Well, I can't All wait. Right. I'm going to pull up your book because I have the bundle and check it out. I think I already did. So what, what's the name of your book again in the in the yeah. bundle? Yeah, it's Five Star Salad Revolution. Five Star. Okay, so it should have another Got a green cover. Five before it. Okay, I'm looking for it. So I will go over a little bit about just what goes into a five-star salad for those of you that haven't heard this yet. 
Um, so a five star salad again is what a, what I consider a salad that that makes up something that would be considered a meal. All right. So we want to make, as Dr. Joel Furman says, make salad the main dish. That's what I'm trying to do here is teach people how to make salad the main dish at least one time a day. And, and that's also what I, you know, I go into very more, a lot more detail in the book. There's, there's 198 pages in the book for you guys to learn about leafy greens, to learn about, you know, why people struggle to eat leafy greens and how you can change that. And, and yeah, so, so the first pillar of a five-star salad is one pound of leafy greens, right? So that might sound like a lot, but once you start eating salads like this, it become, it's, it's a breeze. It's really not that difficult. So just to give you an idea of what that looks like, it's like one good head of romaine lettuce and then like a little bit of cabbage or kale or some other, um, you know, cruciferous vegetable is, is what I prefer. And that's the second pillar of the five-star salad. So you want at least one pound of greens and want to have a little bit of those being a cruciferous vegetable, a cruciferous leafy green, like kale, cabbage, bro uh, um, arugula, you know, bok choy, something like that. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to, I'm going to chop this up. Typically I, I, I do wash my greens. I just soak them in water and baking soda for about 10 or 15 minutes. And then I run them through my salad spinner, but just for, for time's sake, um, I'm going to just chop them up because these actually look, um, really good. They don't actually even look like they need to be washed. So, so yeah, I'm just going to chop this up. And another thing that I like to always, you know, kind of suggest to people is to make sure you have the right tools for the job. Because if you're trying to make a salad every night and you don't have the right tools, it's not going to be as sustainable of a process. And so making things easy is how you make it sustainable, right? Nobody, nobody likes to feel like they have a, a chore to do every single night. And so by having the right tools, like a nice big knife, um, like a nice big cutting board, the right size bowls, you know, that sort of stuff, it just makes the process so much easier and so much more enjoyable to help you, you know, want to keep doing it. That was a little slicky. Daria bought the raw bundle yesterday and can't wait to get not cooking. <laughs> Perfect. We always mention you when people say can't do it if I live in a cold climate, because you do. <laughs> yes, Minnesota is, is pretty close to as cold as it's going to get. Um, you know, maybe Canada gets a little colder, I'm not sure. But, but yeah, it's definitely doable. Definitely doable. Just got to have the right, the right, you know, you got to set yourself up for success, again, with the right tools and, you know, having the right foods in your home. And, and preparing, you know, to, to succeed and have the right stuff in, in your house. All right, so for, for the base of the salad, again, is just a, a type of lettuce, and we're using romaine today. I leave, so with the cruciferous vegetables, I chop them up pretty fine. With the, uh, with the lettuces, I don't chop them up quite as fine. Um, and so just having, the right, you know, size of, of greens is also important to a, a nice, satisfying salad. Because if, if you make the pieces too big, it's just not that easy to chew. And, you know, it's kind of, you don't, you don't really get all the flavors on one bite if, if everything is too big. So I like to make things, you know, fairly small so that I can fit all those different flavors and all the ingredients, you know, as much as possible onto each forkful. Okay, so there's the lettuce. And now the, the recipe calls for Napa cabbage, but I've only got green or white cabbage here, uh, depending on what you call it. 
Um, so e anything works really, uh, really the, the five-star salad recipes in the book. Um, well, I, I do like them, but if you don't have the ingredients as written, you know, you can substitute things. Uh, I think the most important thing is just following the five pillars and, you know, whatever ingredients you have on hand that you can do that with, you know, that's going to, that's going to be just fine. Um, the salad dressing is really my focus for, for making the salad, you know, pulling the salad together and just making it just that much more satisfying. And so, so this, the dressing is, is what I think holds it all together. Most important part. Yes. How long do your homemade dressings last? What's that? How long do your homemade dressings last? Uh, they last, you know, probably three days, I would say. But actually, what I like to do is I've got a, a vacuum sealer, and then I've got a lid that I got off of Amazon. And it fits right on top of uh, well, fits right on top of a wide mouth mason jar, and so you just put it right on top of the mason jar, and it's got this uh, this silicone seal around it, and then you just take it, it does come with its own pump, but I have a, another pump that's um, electric. And so I just stick it on there and I turn it on and it sucks out all the oxygen, well, a good amount of the oxygen anyways. And that lets, I can store it for literally, you know, a week or more. So if you have little gadgets like that, you can actually extend the shelf life of them. Um, but if you're just using a regular, you know, mason jar or a regular container to hold it in, I would say, you know, three days would be the top um, amount of days that I would save it. Um, so, yeah. You know what Ben Franklin said, fish and visitors smell in three days. <laughs> what? What's that? It was, fish, an old, uh, it was an old quote by Benjamin Franklin, uh, fish and visitors smell in three days. <laughs> nice. I like that. I hadn't heard that one. Well, he had a lot of quotes. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we've got the greens chopped up here. Okay, now the next pillar of the five-star salad is to have at least uh, a little bit of a fresh herb. So or cilantro, parsley, uh, basil. So I've got some cilantro here. I'm just gonna chop off a little bit of that. Yeah. And I always like to have a fresh herb just because of the flavor component. It just adds such a nice element to the salad on top of, you know, all of the antioxidant properties and the other micronutrients that are in herbs. So it's just, it has a lot of different effects, but I think the most noticeable obviously is going to be the, uh, the added flavor. All right. So a little cilantro in there. And now the fourth pillar of the salad is five different colors in your salad. This is going to give you the polyphenols and the antioxidants and, and these other important phytonutrients that not only make, you know, they reduce inflammation in the body and, and help to, you know, do have antioxidant effects. They also are prebiotics that feed our good bacteria so that they can make us even more important beneficial nutrients like short chain fatty acids. And it keeps them healthy, it keeps us healthy. And so as many different colors as we can get, um, 
you know, the better. So, all right. Um, so yeah, I've got, we've got red in the tomatoes. We've got orange in the carrot, uh, green. We're going to put in some green apple into this salad. Um, we've got some purple onion and the green lettuce, the different lettuces. So that is at least five different colors. If you can do more, you know, that's even better. But I'm gonna add in a little of this red or purple onion. I'd say purple. And another reason why I like to get in all of these different colors is, you know, I talk about in the book where, um, you know, there's really, there, there's various things that go into making a salad satisfying. Um, there's some of the more obvious things like the look of it, you know, we, they say we eat with our eyes first. And so, you know, we've got all the colors in there. You know, I think it's good to get a nice looking bowl and, you know, have something that displays it nicely. Um, because, you know, I mean, for one, the colors, you know, we're, we're drawn to colors instinctually. Uh, you know, as if we were out looking for food out in nature, you know, we'd see, you know, fruits get ripe when they, you know, they're bright when they get ripe. So uh, we can spot the strawberries or the mangoes or whatever we're looking for. And, and that's just, uh, you know, so, so when we see these colors, we, we instinctually know that there's energy there, that there's nutrition there um, that's going to help us to survive. And so by making the salads look really nice and really colorful, we just increase our appetite and, and our desire for the, for the meal. And same with smell. You know, if it smells really nice, you're getting all these fresh ingredients. The fresher the ingredients, the, the better the smell is going to be uh, and the more nutrition there's going to be. And so using fresh ingredients and things like herbs and, and different aromatic um, like onion, you know, plants can really help to increase your appetite for the meal. And also mouthfeel. You know, like I mentioned just a little bit ago, the mouthfeel is another thing that, you know, food scientists pay attention to. That's that's one of the one of the ways that <clears throat> that uh, industry, uh, you know, kind of addicts people to their ultra processed foods is they look at adding, you know, they, they try and hit the bliss point is what they call it. It's that point where there's just the right sweetness, just the right creaminess, just the right saltiness, that it generates the maximum dopamine response. And that's what they call the bliss point. And so that's kind of what we're doing with these salads is we're constructing it in a way that we're adding all these different components that are just, you know, it just pulls it together in such a great way that it just, I think it, it hits our natural bliss points um, as opposed to some of those unnatural, unnaturally high bliss points that, you know, ultra processed foods hit. Um, but we're hitting the healthy, you know, maximum of, of dopamine response when we compile a salad in this way, I think. So, um, so yeah, there's there's the smell, the look, how, how you prepare it with you know how it feels in your mouth, and then also there's some things that we don't obviously recognize, and so things like the one is the volume, and that's one of the reasons why the five star salad has at least a pound of greens. Um, you know, it's the volume helps to hit those stretch receptors in the stomach that help us to recognize, you know, it sends hormones to the brain, letting us know that we've, uh, we've taken in a, a substantial amount of food. And then there's also the, um, the nutrient sensors in our, in our intestines. And so when we take in 
nutrients that we need, the body also, you know, sends signals to the brain, letting it know that we're taking in the nutrition that we need. Um, and then when I'm cutting up this apple, again, the, the preparation of each ingredient, I think is important. So, you know, however you like your different ingredients, uh, sliced or cut, um, I like uh, to do really thin slices of apple, and then I just kind of chop it from there. But I think having just really uh, thin slices just tastes better when I'm eating it in the salad. Yeah, makes a difference. Joyce wants to know, do you uh, eat any cooked food? Uh, yeah, I will have cooked food. I, I'm, I'm flexible with my diet, especially being here in, in Minnesota, where the quality of, of fruits especially isn't that great uh, year round. So yeah, I, I will include a little bit of what I call consciously cooked food, which is basically food that's been cooked with wet heat uh, so that there's less formation of, you know, acrylamides and things like that. Um, so I'll include like a, with, and, and when I eat cooked food, it's always with my big raw salad because it just helps. I just digest it way better that way. Um, and so I'll have like a bowl of vegetable soup or steamed vegetables either in my salad or with it. Uh, and, and I always, I have the rule that uh, you have to eat at least half, if not three quarters of the salad before touching any of the, the cooked portion of the, of the meal. That way, you know, what I've noticed is that when people do include cooked food that are, that are trying to be more raw, um, they'll end up eating so much cooked food that they don't have room for their salad. They're already full. So by eating enough of, you know, at least half to three quarters of the salad uh, before you start to eat the, whatever you're having with it, um, that, that ensures that you're going to get in, you know, the, the, the recommended or the targeted amount of leafy greens. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. You mentioned this pickle spice in your recipe. What is pickle spice? Yes. So this is, oh, I should have grabbed the bag. Well, I'll grab it. Do you guys have any questions? For Matt or his kitty, please place them in the chat. Stephanie, I'll get to yours as soon as he comes back. I appreciate the question marks before. All right. So yeah, in pickle spice, now, I, this is what I guess people use, I assume, to when they make homemade pickles. Um, it's dill. So it's, uh, yeah, it's dill, uh, yellow mustard seed, coriander seed, bay leaf, cinnamon, chili flakes, allspice, ginger, black pepper, and cloves. So it's just, uh, I just get it as a, a mix. And, and it, I've never used it other than when I was just looking for uh, different recipes to create for this book. And I just thought, hey, you know what? I've never never even looked at this really. And, and so I just tried it in one of the, the recipes and it was pretty good. So I just figured I'd, I'd kind of hone it and, and fine tune it. And, and now I, it's one of my, it's one of my favorites. So it's wow, cool. a nice little spice. Nice. There's a question from Stephanie. What does the baking soda do to clean the vegetables? Yeah. So there's actually been studies done on how to most efficiently remove pesticide residue. And what they found is that that was the most effective way to, to remove uh, you know, residues. And so they, in, the, in the study, I think they soaked it for like, it was either 10 or 15 minutes. And I think it was uh, one teaspoon for every two cups of water, um, two cups of soap water. And so, yeah, I think it just neutralizes the, the pesticides uh, because it's so base chemistry, so alkaline. And so, yeah, it neutralizes it. And then you just, so I'll soak it in there, rinse it off a little, like just shake it, put it in my salad spinner and run it through the salad spinner. And, and then it gets off all the water and, 
And yeah, so that's, that's just what I have, you know, come to do with my salads. I never used to, I thought, you know what, I get organic, you know, I'm not going to worry about it. So I never really washed my vegetables. Um, but after really after researching for this book, you know, I kind of changed my opinion on that a little bit because, you know, there are some things with our food system, while it does have a lot of great benefits, there's also some issues that, that could improve. And so, you know, you just never know what's going to be on fruits or vegetables or leafy greens. So, so now I do most of the time rinse or soak them and then rinse them off and then run them through the salad spinner. Nice. Is your cat raw? Someone wants to know. <laughs> uh, no, unfortunately not. Um, we do get them. So I tried to get them to switch over to a vegan cat food and they just, they wouldn't, they weren't liking it. So uh, that's like the, that's the hardest part about having the cat and, and, and being vegan. Um, actually we got, we rescued them before I was actually even vegan. So yeah, that's, unfortunately, I probably won't have a cat again for that reason, because we do have to, to buy animal feed for them. Um, but yeah, so they're not raw, but they probably wish they were. Maybe you uh, can get a bunny next, like Chef Ocean. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, um, my partner Celine's brother actually has a rabbit. He loves it, so... So that might be an option for us. Yeah, they're cute, but you got to always protect your computer cords. They love oh, right. to chew them. Yes. All right. So I'm just going to chop these in quick. Just kind of toss them in. Um, and then I don't think I finished talking about the, so there's the, there's three things that go into what I think go into big, big parts of, of what go into satis making a satisfying salad. And, and the, the, the least obvious things are again, the volume, uh, the nutrient sensors, and then the calorie sensors as well. So that's why I like to put in, you know, not just lettuce, but also some cruciferous uh, lettuce, lettuces or cruciferous leafy greens, because they are, you know, generally going to be more calorie dense. And, you know, when we're talking leafy greens, that's still not calories, very calorie dense, but um, every little bit, I think, makes a difference. You know, some people really enjoy the hardiness of kale and, and cabbage. So it, it helps to make it feel more substantial. Uh, in addition to, you know, all of these other ingredients that we're putting in. Um, and so to top it off with that nut, I like to do nut or seed based dressings. Um, I did put five fat free dressings in the book as well. For anybody that doesn't want uh, nut or seed based dressing, but um, for me, it works out really well. And I keep it to three tablespoons of nuts or seeds per dressing. And a lot of times I don't even eat the whole dressing at one time. I'll, I'll have half of it at one salad and then have half at another. So um, it really just depends on personal preference, but that's, that's what has been working well for me. That's great. Yeah, I noticed one uh, that was made with figs. Yeah. Yep. There's a fig one. I think there's an apricot one in there. So yeah, when, when I don't use nuts or seeds, um, I do like to use like dried fruits to, to give it some of that, like it makes it kind of creamy and gives it that sweetness. So it works pretty nice. Now with carrots, I don't know, this is again, another preference thing, but my brother, he loves carrots in his salad that are shredded. And I know a lot of people do like to shred their carrots. Um, for some reason, I like carrots just sliced, just like in a circle here. Um, 
for some reason that's that what that's what tastes best to me sometimes i'll chop them up a little bit more but um i don't know for some reason shredded carrots i mean they're all right i don't mind them but for some reason, I, I prefer to have them a little thicker, I think. Gives me more of that crunch. And I know a lot of people miss that crunchiness when they're, especially when they go raw. Although, you know, like apples are crunchy and celery. But um, I think the more crunch people can get, I think they're just happier. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Let's see if there's any more yeah. questions. All right, and then we've got, we're going to add the red component, and this is the just cherry tomatoes, or grape tomatoes, I guess. Hey, your editor, Cherry Likes Fruit, just did a super chat. I got to do raw every day. She's going to. You do. I know. Yeah. You, yeah, she would, she would be there every time. She's the best. Um, thank you, Sherry. Um, so now we're going to add another component of the mouth feel, which is again, another part that makes it so satisfying. And you know, a lot of people like to have a, something that's a little chewy in their salad. And so you can put in some raisins or, you know, some other, you know, like other dried fruits, apricots or, you know, cranberries or something like that. So we're going to put in a little bit of raisins and that gives it a nice, sweetness again but also that chewiness you know that i really like once i'm when i'm eating the salad all right so that is that's what's going in the salad now we're going to make the the dressing which is the pickle spice dressing and yeah this is this is again a brand new recipe just like all the other recipes in the book um, except for the fat-free ones. Those, those weren't new, but somebody wanted them in there, so I threw them in. Um, and so, yeah, all of the, there's 17 brand new recipes that I really think you guys are going to like. And this one is based with sunflower seeds. And so we've got three tablespoons of sunflower seeds. Let's toss those in the blender. And then we've got two medjool dates. You want to just make sure those are pitted. And so that's going to give it a nice sweetness. I like to use garlic in, in a lot of my dressings. So I'm going to put in one clove of garlic. And, and if you have a Vitamix, um, you can just leave the skin on then rather than peeling the garlic. Um, you know, that's something that I, sometimes I peel it, sometimes I don't. I'm just not going to peel it this time. Um, cause the, the Vitamix just pulverizes it. So you really don't even notice. Um, and then we're going to do one half of a lemon. And I, when I make, when I put lemon in my smooth or my, uh, dressings, I just like to peel off the yellow and leave as much of the, the white as I can. And then I throw everything in, into the dressing. I don't just squeeze the juice out. Um, I like to just uh, throw it all in. So you've been getting good feedback from about the bundle, Chef AJ? Yeah, and have you tried anything from Lissa's book? A lot of people are saying they're making the hand salads. You could take any of your salads and put it in Lissa's wrap. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to, but Lissa's wraps are top on my list. Um, yeah, they look incredible. Um, but yeah, I, I just I haven't had time to really make anything yet. So I'm, I'm definitely going to do that after the bundle and after things calm down a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's that's one of the great things every single year about the bundle is, is how creative people get. And, and, you know, as time goes on, people are becoming more and more skilled at creating these types of things. Like Lissa mastered the wraps. Um, and, and so, yeah, I just, I think it's, it's such a good value. And, you know, I, I'm glad to, to hear all the great, I've been getting a lot of great feedback as well about, about the bundle. So it's always nice to hear. What's your cat's uh, name? What's your cat's name? Uh, this is Slick. 
because he always tried to climb smooth, slippery surfaces when he was a kitten. So we just called him Slick. <laughs> Cute. And we've got his brothers around here somewhere. He's, he's Jack. Jack and Slick. Um, okay, so then all that's left here is a teaspoon of the pickle spice. Toss that right in. And three quarters of a cup of water. I like distilled water. And so we have a home distiller here that we just, you know, keep running all the time. And you know, we fill up our glass jugs. Um, you know, I think especially, you know, not just for taste, but for the microbiome, I think it's really important to avoid a lot of the, the chemicals that are in tap water. And so I just, you know, try to remind people to just drink the purest water that you can uh, with the fewest amount of contaminants in it. And, and I have found that distilled water is, is what I think is the best. And so that's what we do. But again, if anybody, you know, has any other type of water that they like, it doesn't really change the, the dressing, but, but yeah. All right, so here I'm gonna just blend it up for a few seconds here, and then it is ready to go. See how creamy that is. Oh, sorry, Sticky. Not right now. <laughs> Pat wants a little dressing. He does. He, he's a salad fiend. All right. Um, so yeah, that that is uh, the dressing. Anyways, it's uh, very creamy and very delicious. So basically, what I like to do. We usually have a smaller wide mouth class, but I'll just figure that out afterwards. Um, so I'm just going to pour about half of this on. Now you can, you know, you can put the whole thing on. I, I do that, you know, sometimes as well. But a lot of times I'll just use half. And that's another very convenient thing is when you have two servings worth of dressing, you don't have to make it every single night. And that's another thing that, um, you know, I recommend for people is to, you know, you can batch prepare your salad ingredients. Um, so you can make enough for, you know, two or three days. And, um, you know, we do that sometimes where that is where I, I will eat shredded carrots and other ingredients like that. Um, Cause we'll just throw like carrots and, uh, cucumber and celery and everything through a food processor. And then we keep it in a, a Pyrex or a glass container in the fridge. And we can just take as much as we need out. And it usually lasts a couple of days. So it just cuts down a lot on the preparation time each day. Um, but yeah, there is the in a pickle salad. There's no pickles, but uh, it does have the pickle spice. 
and yeah, it's really, really tasty. That looks great. You know, I see you have an oven behind you. What do you use your oven for since not for cooking? Well, Celine actually does make like, uh, like when we, especially for holidays and we have people over, she'll make like uh, banana muffins and things. So, so she uses it for, for various things, but really we don't use it that often. Um, she, she does use the instant pot though, probably three times a day. So the, her, the instant pot for her is like the Vitamix for me, you know, it's like just, we, we just use them like nonstop. So, so yeah, we, there is, there is definitely some cooking going on in the house. <laughs> That's quite all right. Well, thanks, Matt. Uh, the book looks great. The dressings look yeah. great. Thank you so much. People you have till to people, audience everyone, viewers, friends, you have until tomorrow at midnight Pacific time to get the new ultimate raw vegan bundle. It's completely new. If you bought any other bundle, you don't have the books in here, including Lissa's brand new hand salads book. So at least click the link, check it out to see if you're interested in it. And thank you so much, Matt. Uh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. It's always, it's always fun. Yeah, it's a good time because it's pretty much your dinner time now in Minnesota. Exactly. So, yeah, this worked perfect. And now that's, I'm just a, that's why that people like to book their show uh, according to their time zones because they're basically making their lunch or dinner. So yes. take care. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific time for Dr. Scott Harrington for Vegan Doc Talk, where he answers all your medical